When Harry met Sally, uh, that was based on my experiences as a single person uh, after being married for 10 years and being thrown back into the dating world and being and, and for 10 years I was making a complete and utter mess of my personal life and I thought well this has got to be the basis of something here there's got to be a movie in here somewhere and I met with Nora Ephron about another project and she didn't like that other idea and I said well I'm f f noodling around with an idea of doing a relationship about uh, a man and, and a woman who are coming off of long-term relationships they become friends and they worry about whether or not if they have sex, it's going to ruin the friendship. They have sex, and it does ruin the friendship, and then how they ultimately can get back together. And she said, okay, great, let's go. So we started working with uh, Andy and I, and, and, and Nora started working on this together. And uh, I would just tell her my experiences, and Andy would tell her his experiences. Nora threw in her experiences, and we tried to craft what we, what we initially called scenes from a friendship. You know, it was like the Bergman scenes from a marriage. We just wanted to have, you know, these two people talking to each other about their, you know, men and women and relationships and see where we went. And uh, what came out of it was, was when Harry met Sally. Well, Billy, was be we were best friends, you know, so it was easy to work with him. Uh, he added a tremendous amount to the film. He came along after we had gone through many, many drafts, and he added... You know, some of the funniest moments in the movie were th jokes that Billy added when he came on board. The funniest line in the movie, which is, uh, I'll have what she's having, which was a, a line my mother says in the deli when Meg Ryan fakes the orgasm. That was a line Billy came up with. Um, and it was fun to work with him because we were very so close at the time, and he trusted me so, so much. And he was playing, a, basically, a character who was an extension of me. So, uh, and he certainly knew me as well as anybody. And so he could do, uh, and then he pushed his own sensibility through that, and uh, I think we came up with something pretty good. Yes, a friend of mine, Bobby Columbi, um, when I was look, you know, casting around to who to do the music, he said, you got to hear this young guy, Harry Connick. He's 20 years old. He's, he's, he plays piano like Thelonious Monk, and he, and he sings like Frank Sinatra. And he played me the CD of his, and I went, holy mackerel, this is amazing. You know, and so I said, we got to get him. And uh, we brought him in, and he, he played piano. He sung on it. Mark Shaman uh, did a lot of the orchestrations, some of them Nelson Riddle-type orchestrations. And we picked these old standards, and some of them Harry sung. Some of them we took to, from, uh, you know, existing recordings and built this kind of soundtrack of standards.